Hello everybody, just a big thank you and welcome to my tutorial on how to land the 737 uh, NG series aircraft during an LNAV slash VNAV non-precision approach down to minimums. Um, so I'm doing this uh, voice over after I conducted the approach, so this is going to be a, an after voiceover, after the gameplay voiceover uh, for this, so I, I might be, I'm just going to talk you through how to conduct this approach safely. Um, I am a real airline pilot, so I do this on a daily basis. Well, not at the moment due to the pandemic, but on a daily basis, we did this quite, yeah, quite a lot. So, um, starting off, we're here in Carcassonne, um, south of France. Uh, we're conducting this uh, El Navi Nav approach. It's a very, it's a bit of a strange one. This one because uh, you have the instrument approach fix. As you can see that we're passing over now. We're just turning left, uh, heading towards this Mike Kilo 302 point, and we need to be at uh, 3,500 feet and above. There's also a speed limitation there of 180 knots. So we're slowing down now uh, for that. We were a little bit faster to start off the approach, but uh, the thing is, you're so high for this approach, there was no need to slow down initially, but. Uh, I was using the speed brake just to adhere to the speed restrictions coming up. So as you can see, we've uh, selected that. Uh, I've gone into level change because I thought it was a an easier way of just getting the speed back. VNAV is a great mode we like to use uh, on the line, but sometimes, especially in the simulator, it doesn't play ball with you. Um, again, if you like touching lots of buttons, go for it. Click level change, vertical speed, whatever you like to use but it does make your life easier if you just hit VNAV. And we will be flying the approach with VNAV um, because that makes life very easy for us. Uh, so we're on the basically the downwind leg now of this procedure. It's about 11.8 miles long, um, heading to the Mike Kilo 304 point now. Uh, so we've got a bit of time. This is where I just checked that we've got the, the runway in the fixed page. We check that we've got a five mile range ring where we'll be selecting our landing gear down and, and uh, commencing a landing checklist. And a 10 mile range ring just for situational awareness and uh, MSA constraints in the area. Uh, we're currently at flaps two. We have to keep flaps two. We, we like to call this the uh, gentleman's flap setting on the line uh, because not many people use it. It goes forgotten. Most people go from flaps one to flaps five straight away. Um, and if you have time, if you want to have less drag, go to flaps too. Uh, so I use it, this is a great example of when to use it to be honest. You have a speed restriction and you need to slow down and in generally at 60 tons landing weight, what, what we're landing at uh, this aircraft in Takakson at this time in the simulation, it, flaps one's going to give you 185 to 190 knots in general. Uh, so next speed restriction is going to be 170, we will not be able to make that with flaps 5 because the flaps 5 speed will also be the flaps 2 speed so what you can do is go a little bit lower with flaps 10 again a not very often used flap setting a great setting to slow down with speed brakes if you need to slow down as long as you are below 210 knots because you don't want to uh, you know damage the uh, flap settings the flaps uh, do any damage to the aircraft itself uh, so as you can see, we're going to turn base shortly after this Mike Kilo 304 point that you can see on the navigation display. Um, you're going to follow all this as well with the chart up on the left-hand side of the screen. It'll be popping up uh, during this video. Um, I'm just double-checking the VREF at the moment. So 59.1 is what we're going to be landing with. Uh, just double-check that. The speed hasn't changed. 134 in the VREF. We fly one, uh, 139 knots. Which is pretty, it's a decent speed. The 737 is actually quite badly designed that it has quite a high uh, V ref speed on the approach. It's as high as a 777, which is not great. But, uh, you know, oh yeah, I forgot to put those lights on. We should have done that earlier, coming down through 10,000 feet. Just make sure the cabin is secure. So, when we get past this point, uh, we're going to slow down. We've got a four mile track. Uh, to slow down to 170 knots. Now, that won't be an issue 
obviously if you're thinking about it. The thing is, we have a Tailwind and we are descending. We're currently in VNAV path and LNAV, so that's all dealing uh, with the vertical and the lateral guidance, which is great. The autopilot's handling this. It's taking the workload from us, which is just fantastic. Thank you, Jimmy, just checking the, the descent page. We do have a 3.4 glide slope. Uh, 3.4 degree glide slope, I believe, or 3.5 degree glide slope. No, it's not a glide slope, I do apologize. It's, it's the vertical track down to the runway. Um, now, that isn't going to be an issue, uh, as because we're going to be in flaps full speed, but if you're at lower flaps, I think it might be a bit of a hassle to control the speed. So as you can see, we're slowing down now. Uh, you put down flaps 10, and you can easily take the bug back to 170 knots. It's 170 maximum, so I'm just bugging the flap 10 mark. Uh, getting the speed break out now, as I said, we had that little bit of a tailwind there, so as you can see the speed was not decreasing. Once the flaps are out, once the speed break is out, with VNAV trying to keep that vertical path, there's no basic mode like level change or, or vertical speed to help you slow down. So you want to get the drag out to get that speed under control. Also, when you have a 90 degree turn like the one we're just about to see as we're about to turn onto the final approach track from base, um, it's... It's, you know, it's hard if you're going quick. You know, 180 knots is what you want maximum. But there is a reason they've given you the speed restriction. So the best is to adhere to it. So now as we're turning right onto the final approach track, what you're going to do is you're going to select the uh, runway heading, which is what we've just done, 276 degrees. The chart I might put up might not be up to date, so you'll have to excuse this. Um, 276 degrees is the heading. And then what we're looking for is we've, we're descending initially to a platform altitude of 3,500 feet, which is fine. Two miles prior to the Foxtrot Mike Kilo 28 point, which is the, the FAF, the final approach fix, we will then select, in my company anyway, we like to select uh, basically the minimas or the minimas rounded up to the nearest 100 feet uh, on the altitude selector window on the autopilot to fly this. It's as a safety buffer basically. If you forget to reselect the. Uh, so there we go, we're selecting now, we're two miles away, selecting the. Uh, minimum altitude which is 680 feet so we'll round that up to 700 um, 700 feet selected there it, it's a safety uh, option uh, you know so it's if you if if you aren't visual and you completely forget if your head's not in the game the airplane will level off at that altitude and you're not gonna you know you're not gonna bust the minimus that's what it's for so as you can see here we're looking on the uh, vertical situation profile and what you really want to look for here is blunder error on this uh, so this will tell you if the runway is on the green ground. You don't want it below that green uh, ground uh, detail on that display because if it's below, that means you're going to crash into the ground and your minimas are all wrong and the Q&H setting is all wrong. Something is wrong and you, you're probably going to kill yourself uh, and everyone else with you, which is not something you want to do. So we're flying down this approach now. Basically, you want to check altitudes versus distances. The next range, I believe, is seven nautical miles on that display on top right of the navigation display. So it's seven miles. Uh, it's not actually on there. So six miles, we're looking for 2,700 feet. Six miles, 2,700. Um, so 6.8, yeah, 2,700. It's looking good so far. The VNAV's all within the profile. Um, there you go. Terrain is noted. The terrain is selected on my display. And there's uh, mountains to the left and the right, but nothing it should affect. 2,700 feet there at 6 miles. Perfect. So, 5 mile ring is coming up. So, the 5 miles is our... Uh, we put the gear down. It's our IFR gate. So, we're going to put the landing gear down and start the landing checklist now. So, the gear goes down. Flaps to the 15 mark. Uh, it's reducing the speed. Very important. Don't forget that, especially on such a quick approach as... Uh, Start switches are to continuous. Check the recall. On the speed brake. The auto brake is at the maximum setting, which is great. And uh, put the landing lights on as well. We're going to go straight to flaps 25 initially and then flaps 40. The speed's under control, so we'll go straight to flaps 40. Matching that speed, 139 knots on the V fly. Landing lights are on. We're presuming we're clear to land. Looking good. We're at 4 miles now, 1,950 feet. The altitude is checking there, which is nice. So the flaps are 40, 40 with a green light, and the landing lights are on. Uh, that is the landing checklist complete. On the pilot flying side, you have progress page 4, as you can see, just checking the RNP values. And on the pilot monitoring side, you'll have the legs page, which is what we have. So what we're looking for now, I'm just setting myself up for the manual transition from IFR to visual. 
uh, as we're approaching the minimum mark. Uh, we're going to look for those lights outside, the pappies, and we're going to look for about 62% on the thrust. Um, there with a pitch altitude of zero degrees with flaps 40. So we've got the 1000 mark, we're reselecting 1000 checks. We're going to reselect the altitude in the MCP window. Uh, obviously, we don't want to level off, so what we're going to do is going to select the missed approach altitude, 3500 feet, which is selected. And we go back to our progress page four. So 1,000 feet, we were stable. All the landing checklist is completed. Uh, everything is done. We'll just imagine that the cabin is secure as well. Uh, we've done everything we need to do, really. So we're gonna disconnect the auto throttle, autopilot. And we're gonna fly manually. And I haven't flown in a while, so this is uh, not the best of my landings. So I do apologize. 500. So that's 500, continue. We are stable, speed stable. Profile looks good. Checked. Coming up on the minimas. Continue. There's a slight crosswind from the right, and uh, the speed was slowly dragging off there. I did manage to catch it back at the last second or two, but it didn't drop below VREF, which is not something you want. Um, add a little bit of thrust. 40, 30, 20. Flared a tiny bit too much on this one, I have to admit. And uh, then we touched down, speed brakes deployed, maximum reverses. The auto brake was maximum anyway. It's quite a short runway here at Carcassonne, uh, 1,900 meters. And we bring the aircraft to a stop. Um, so that was the tutorial on how to fly a non-precision approach uh, with LNAV and VNAV on the Boeing 737-800 series aircraft. I just like to thank you guys for watching. If this has been helpful, great. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If it hasn't, then give me a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't enjoy it. Because all feedback is really appreciated. Thank you guys and I hope to see you again in the future.